Today's sales strategy, avoiding a $20 million mistake. Hi everyone, I'm Steve Savant, host of the daily talk show, Let's Get Down to Business. And I'm Don Prent, Senior Advisor to Ensmark. Today's sales idea, Don, is called avoiding a $20 million mistake. I'm telling you, if that's true, that's a big mistake to have. Let's walk through that and show the difference using wealthy and wise and why this is a $20 million swing in net worth. Let's walk through the beginning first. We're talking about this gal, Dr. Rand. She has 350,000 taxable assets at 5%, 350,000 in tax exempts at 4, 1.5 million in equity assets growing at about 7.5% with a 1% dividend, 300,000 in defined contribution assets, making about 7.5, and another half a million dollars in her residence growing at 5%. And of course, she's got a mortgage at 4.4% at 400,000, and an art collection at 7.5%, about 100,000 into that. And then her personal property, cars, different things in her home, equals about 3.1 million in her total net worth. Now, keep that in mind because we're talking about that's her total net worth. Now, I just wanna go through and just show using Wealthy and Wise again, let's just do what she has today. Walk us through, this is her current situation. Sure. Walk us through that. With Wealthy and Wise, you plug in the assets you just went through, and then sort of as a baseline, this is sort of the do nothing plan. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what you're seeing with strategy number one. If she uh, has income coming out, which is shown down here, she's told us a certain amount of income that she wants, actually $27 million over her uh, entire retirement, her net worth, as you can see, with the current do-nothing plan, is she starts here and grows to about $24 million net worth. And so that's sort of where things will go based on mm -hmm. the assets she have, the growth assumptions, the retirement income she's told mm -hmm. us she wants. That's sort of what happens. Okay, so really this is current her current position on a graph. That's right. And then, then the strategy two is where we, if we can go back to that, I want to show this strategy number two right here we come down, strategy number two is where we take $100,000 a year from her current assets, current liquid assets, and we transfer them into a five pay max funded cash value policy. And what happens with that is that her net worth, given the same amount of income, the same 27 million, mm -hmm. plus an additional 500,000 to fund that five pay, her net worth over time by age 100 grows to $44 million. So by repositioning assets, mm -hmm. a half a million dollars of assets mm -hmm. from her current assets into the cash value policy, we have an increase in $20 million in net worth by age 100. Now that's really a distinction because you've used no new money. We didn't have to go out and find any. It was already in her asset allocation model. We just pulled a half a million dollars out and a half a million turned into 20 million. At that's her, right. At, at her, life her net worth increased from $24 million to $44 million, and those $100,000 premiums for five years were not expenses. Those were a reallocation, mm -hmm. a repurposing of current liquid cash, mm -hmm. whether it's taxable or what have you, into the cash value life insurance policy. And we leveraged the accumulation and tax benefits of the life insurance policy, made tax-free loans instead of taxable distributions for retirement, and that's what's caused that giant increase in net worth by age 100. Now, to show the fairness of this, we added a term contract to this. So we bought a $3.6 million 30-year level term. The cost is $3,600. So let's substitute that. Instead of using the permanent indexed universal life contract, let's substitute this 30-year term contract and walk me through this. Sure. What's happening here is, in the first strategy, we just looked at her current plan with no mm -hmm. insurance. The second strategy, we transferred a half a million dollars into a cash value policy and we saw that it had a giant increase in net worth, same amount of income during retirement. Mm -hmm. With the third strategy, we're comparing it to her do nothing plan plus buying term insurance. And that's gonna look even worse because of the cost of the 30 lo yeah, year level, the it's gotta be less. So as you can see, if she, if she were to buy a 30 year level term, her net worth drops by about a million dollars by age 100. She's now down to 23 million. So it's a real simple question. Would you rather have 23 million, 24 million, or 44 million mm -hmm. as your cushion during retirement to either take more income or maybe your assumptions, some of your assumptions mm -hmm. are less, your growth rates are less. I'd rather be at the 44 million. And again, this is not costing her anything because we're just reallocating half a million dollars over to using the index universal life. Yeah, what Wealthy and Wise does so well is let you look at all of the assets, growth assumptions, retirement needs, and project out 
different scenarios, including integrating cash value life insurance as one of the accumulation assets, mm. and it changes the sale from a life insurance premium as an expense to a life insurance premium as a capital transaction. And it's an incredibly valuable um, way of helping clients understand the value of this. I want to ask you about this because I noticed you have a little red arrow here saying, by the way, when this strategy occurs with the term, there is no more coverage That's because right. we didn't convert it. That's right. And so when the 30 year expires, it expires. Yeah, it's really unfair to the cash value policy, <laughs> even though you know we were already ahead by $20 million because mm -hmm. We're providing death benefit throughout age 100. The term insurance only provides the death benefit for 30 years until age 70, mm -hmm. and then the death benefit is zero. This is a great application of looking at the difference and the impact of a traditional permanent life insurance policy as it really affects and impacts significant growth in net worth. Remember, we kept all the same three different income scenarios relatively the same. This is an issue of net worth, and of course, if we have that kind of net worth, it could be charitable giving. It could be children, legacy for grandchildren. There's so many things to do with net worth. We're just using the same money. Yeah. I mean, this 27 million of income during retirement was kept as a constant with all three plans. And for a lot of people, they're worried about running out of money. The bigger the cushion, the better they like it. And this shows that with the cash value life insurance as part of your overall asset accumulation strategy, you've got a bigger cushion to ward against running out of money. Today's sales idea is brought to you by Ash Brokerage, the practice enhancement company. And by Insmark, the most widely used software when it comes to strategies and presentations using cash value life insurance.